Okay, so now we move forward with our uh, next panel. Uh, live casino on the European continent. We are coming back to Europe now and uh, exploring uh, the live dealer casino si scenario and live streaming scenario with some very seasoned guests of, the, of, the, of such industries. I have with me uh, just one second. So I, I have everything okay. So I have with me Oliver Litz, uh, CEO at Nanocosmos. I have uh, Chris Stribosch, uh, Vice President of Business Development, also from Nanocosmos, and uh, David Mann, uh, Chief Commercial Officer at Swin. Hello, gentlemen. Our uh, our lady uh, speaker is missing, uh, so it's going to be just us guys now. Uh, but first, without before we go into the subject, I would like to ask you all to introduce yourself and share some information about your background and your company so people will know you. I know David is very known in the industry, but everybody still needs an introduction. So, okay, let's, let's, let's start with Chris. Chris, you can maybe go ahead. And... Well, thank you very much uh, for being on this uh, panel and uh, discuss together with David and Oliver uh, about uh, uh, the casino online and uh, land-based. Um, my name is Chris Treibos. I'm uh, over 30 years of uh, business experience uh, in the video industry and in the last five years, uh, very much involved in the uh, online iGaming industry on a uh, global level. My background is uh, business commercial strategy, uh, and uh, I have seen from very uh, close by the developments in the online iGaming space on a global scale. So I'm uh, very happy to be part of this panel and to share our years, thoughts and experience around it. Uh, more background about the company. I rather leave up to Oliver, who's the founder and CEO of the company. Okay, thank you so much, Chris. Okay, so David, you're next. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for inviting me on as well, Zoltan. It's very nice to join another panel, especially with uh, Chris and Oliver. Uh, we spoke a couple of times recently as well. Um, so I'm David Manning, the Chief Commercial Officer at Swint. Um, we are, we are <clears throat> a B2B casino games product supplier. We have a range of our own slot games that we develop, um, especially targeting local um, specific markets. And then in relation to this panel, particularly, we also have a, a live dealer solution called Swint Live, which is broadcast straight from the heart of gaming, Las Vegas. Um, and it's a really modern, mobile-focused product um, <clears throat> that we're really proud to bring into a very competitive marketplace. Um, so in terms of a bit of history of myself, I've been working in uh, iGaming for a number of years. I've worked in the wider gaming industry since um, for around 12 or 13 years now. Um, coming from land-based, coming from Sportsbook, and to social casino, and then into B2B casino supplying. Thank you so much, David. Oliver, so you can now wrap up the introduction part. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for having me. I'm Oliver, founder and CEO of Nanocosmos. Also been working in the video industry for a long time and uh, also in the iGaming industry. So we are, uh, Nanocosmos is a technology provider for live streaming. So we provide an, a global live streaming platform for interactive use cases like in iGaming, a robust platform 24 seven at a global scale. So B2B approach and uh, our customers are in the iGaming space are platform providers and land-based casinos as well who go live with their studios or casinos. And we do the delivery of the video around the world in about one second that's our claim and that's what we have our focus on to really have a reliable live stream service as a back end for the online gaming all right thank you so much so let's dive into our subject because i i don't know if i told you i was uh, i was writing an article about a month ago about live dealer casinos and live, live, live casinos and uh, found about also about the history of it and found out that in the when uh, online gaming appeared in the late 90s uh, and also live dealer casinos started arising it was something that was looked like at, like science fiction or future uh, it was later ditched a bit because of uh, 
of, of streaming issues and uh, not everybody afford the PC and stuff like that. So where are we at now in 2021? And uh, hence the, the title of the discussion, I would like to address this question to all panelists here. Uh, uh, where is live dealer casino right now and live streaming? Uh, and what are the biggest innovation in the past 10 years that drove us here? So who would like to go first? Um, I, I can begin um, to take it from a casino product angle. Okay. Um, I think we can all see the extreme growth and performance of um, the live dealer uh, vertical within the online gaming industry. I mean, Evolution are obviously in a very, very strong position that they're in. And the past few years, this is obviously um, this constant advancement of te technology, of um, uptake of mobile devices and the accessibility available for live dealer has obviously helped grow this product. And yeah, it's, it seems that um, it doesn't really have any signs of slowing down. It seems to be a really engaging, popular format. Um, looking across the kind of um, the streaming products that are available, um, not just within gaming, but obviously the rise of the likes of Twitch and uh, TikTok and live streamers and people delivering live videos on a, on a much more personal basis. People obviously quite like this connection to have to people and um, directly dealing with the person who's on the camera. And live casino offers this replication of a, almost like a live environment. It's as close you can get to being in a real casino as possible. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Chris or Oliver, who would like to go first? Let Oliver go first. Okay. <laughs> he's, so the boss. Wise, he's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone has to give us a great expert uh, opinion about that. But uh, I see it technology-wise. Of course, there are a lot of things uh, which happened. We have the networks now to have uh, live video available any, everywhere. So uh, we are lucky to have that. So we are connected now, even in this conference here. But it's uh, still on this uh, place, it's very different on the use case. So you mentioned live gaming, uh, online gaming, it's much different than things what we do here. So um, also in the gaming industry, it's different that you don't install an app like Zoom here. So you just want to be in an interactive experience for a large audience on a global scale. So the network is there, web access is everywhere. So you have uh, mobile devices, uh, mobile first is a very um let's say, visible approach in many applications. And we also see that in the streaming space, video-based applications, that there's a large part of the yeah, volume done on mobile um, all around the world, uh, especially also in Asia, uh, directly also in the browser. So browser-based access on any device. So you just open a web page and then uh, are part of any application. It can be a game or whatever. It's um, something which is now uh, available everywhere. So... That, of course, requires good devices, good networks, but also good technology, which is available to make these solutions possible. Thank you. Chris? Yeah, you know, it's, it's always good when you look back and you look forward of uh, where are you now? You know, is, is if, you, if you put everything into perspective, is that, you know, uh, you know, from the early days, is something was developed or initiated, and then you said, so how was was it that it came to this where it is now and where is it going? Um, you know, the gaming industry, uh, you know, got, uh, got the biggest trigger, um, you know, by the fact of the mobile phones. Okay. So the whole communication path, people were wanted to be connected, wanted to interact, you know, mobile phones started, you know, you could call each other more easily and so forth. So everything that we're seeing today is just a consequence of what, it, what was initiated in that time and is now creating all kinds of new you know, experiences, entertainment capabilities of creating interest, interesting businesses. So you know, there in the past, you or you could see the land-based casinos and you could see you know, the online casino space and the online casino space could take the easiest immediate uh, profit from these developments, these trends, you know, communicate always on mobile phone, you know, being just on, on, on the train or wherever you are. So if, if you look at the biggest trend from the past, it has been that the 
online space has been triggered is by the mobile and the communication with the mobile. You know, and if we look forward, you know, this is a trend. People will want to communicate more, will want more to have entertainment, exciting entertainment. They want to be, you know, having the best experiences and they are willing to pay for it. But we're now in this, as I call it, morphing phase. Morphing phase, I mean with there is new things happening. There's new testing. There's new legislation. There's, there's all kinds of things going on. So what we're seeing now is, is actually the start of a very interesting trend that will continue and will not stop, but only grow. But what will happen is, you know, you will see quality as we go forward prevail versus quantity. And this is, you know, just as a general development that I see in this market. Got it. Yeah. Interesting point. And I love it. Yeah. yeah, even, yeah. even if I can add to that, I mean, you if you look around maybe five years ago, um, you wouldn't really dream of walking around without Wi-Fi, just using your data stream um, and streaming live casino, for example. You know, the, the, the data costs and even the, the latency, you know, and the speeds that you would require from your device to do that. Now it's entirely possible. You know, you can get an effective data plan in the majority of European countries um, and you could easily be on the bus or in the tube or wherever you are. Um, you can easily just stream live right in your mobile anywhere you want to play. And that accessibility, you know, it's, it's a, definitely a crucial factor in the explosion of growth. Yeah, yeah. Not to brag about things, but uh, during our... Because we are, be, we are with Hipter Festival, we are live since Monday. And on, on, on Tuesday, we had somebody tune in on our conference from an ambulance. <laughs> so <laughs> that's technology right there. I don't know who it was, but it was from an ambulance. It has an IP. So, wow. Okay. So, David, since <laughs> I still have you on screen now and uh, talking about mobile, and, and we know that uh, mobile brought the new era and uh, mobile penetration is huge. And uh, do you think that the pandemic fueled an even more aggressive evolution of, of live dealer casinos? Because most people most probably have been online playing slots, games, etc., but somehow got bored with that maybe and switched to live dealer casinos. Or how was that? Um, I think the, it's, it's the connection that I mentioned earlier that players like to feel kind of part of something and the trust factor of live casino. Um, so when the pandemic hit, there was obviously a large segment of players who, you, who are used to playing in a, an actual casino and having that real interaction with people and sitting around the table and having the excitement and the entertainment value. And when the pandemic comes, they, they couldn't do that. So the, the live casino um, vertical was something that offered as close an experience as possible. Now, it's obviously in certain uh, emerging markets, uh, let's look at, for example, Latin America, um, where there's probably... Um, you know, a slower uptake into the, the online sector compared to the land base. Well, the pandemic can only fuel this transition, but is inevitable anyway. We've seen in Europe the, the relentless growth of players shifting to mobile, um, and especially players coming from the land base to, to the online side. And yeah, the pandemic's definitely played a part in this. And yeah, it's, it's definitely going to keep continuing because once players experience and enjoy the, the, what live dealer can provide, then I think it's, it's only going to remain. Um, certain countries, again, looking, for example, Latin America, um, players maybe did not quite have the same accessibility, availability that they would have before, um, and everybody has a mobile now. So as mobile devices get stronger, as data connections and internet speeds get more reliable and better across the globe, then it's only natural that more players are going to be able to come online and enjoy uh, live, live dealer games. Got it, yeah. Okay, so let's let's also talk about the technical part of things. With, I think Chris, I think you're the best person to do that. Uh, it's about the transition from Flash. You know, well, what what can you say about how HTML or the transition from Flash has uh, been a game changer in, in in the streaming live streaming industry? Well, Flash was always the common dominator for anything with low latency, okay? You know, any type of, you know, use case that had any type of low latency had Flash involved. So, you know, we have a very smart team of, you know, technologists in our company and, you know, Oliver is one of them. And 
at early stages, um, what we saw was that, um, you know, Flash was going to be deprecated and, you know, the browser was there to stay. So the browser came and the browser really, you know, you know, Oliver saw from a vision point of view that the browser was to be our central point to build the technology around and to enable these interactive live streaming use cases that we do today as a platform. Okay. So if you look at Flash, it was, you know, already announced pretty early on. 2015, 16, Flash is going to deprecate and so forth. So it was very interesting to see how fast the market moves that until approximately last year, a month before it really was cut, that we had online casinos said, we need to change now. <laughs> Flash is going to go. Flash? Flash? <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? <laughs> Flash is going to go. So, so this was a very interesting, you know, experience. And, and what I would like to put in perspective there is what David said as well, is the whole world has a different speed. You know, I just listened in to a part of that Jeremiah said about Africa. You know, you cannot look at it from a continent, not even a country, but you have to look at it even from a province point of view. This is also how the speed in the world works in terms of preference of games, uh, how they behave, how they play, what they like to play. So it is definitely not one size fits all. And that is the same with technology. Some pick it up quickly and take advantage of it. And others, you know, wait till the last minute and, you know, have to do. But in general, you know, the, the deprecation of Flash and then our interpretation of what that did to an infrastructure to deliver a service uh, is something that uh, that we did very well, and that's why you know we had very early on a perfect, uh, let's say, solution to exchange flash to our technology. You got it. Yeah, it's a funny story with this. Everybody waking up that flash is going uh, nice. Okay, so Oliver, since everybody's talking about you now, I'm <laughs> going to ask you a question about. Uh, uh, could you tell us uh, of how live streaming solution or particularly your company, NanoStream, can help brick and mortar casinos attract a new audience? Because I think even we are almost two years into this pandemic, I think many brick and mortar casinos are still adapting to this time. Sure, absolutely. And there are a lot, <clears throat> there are a lot of opportunities for land based casinos going to the online space. And I think what is very important, what also David also mentioned uh, already, is trust. So if you have a trustful audience, then uh, you have a great asset already. You have a business running and you have uh, um, casinos running already. So you need to bring them live somehow, but you need to find the right partners for that. So to, the question in the end is who in the end is going to the customers and who is owning the customers? So who's providing the, the platform to the to the end customers? Are, is it the land-based casinos themselves? So do they build their own live streaming platform uh, under their own control, but they do it with partners. So that's that's a great challenge for them, but they are under, in the driving seat somehow. They, they can control it. So they own the content right now and they need to take care that they can take that content online and then they have great chances to really uh, increase their audience uh, at a global scale to anyone accessing, as you mentioned, a mobile phone browser and um, um, transport this trustful uh, content to their to any user in the world. Got it. Yeah, because I know that this uh, synergy between uh, brick and mortar casino and talking about always having an online platform as well has been the talks for the past ten years. Uh, this also includes the live dealer part and the streaming part, and uh, yeah, we I, I think there are uh, there are two sides of things. You you have a studio or you have for uh, streaming and uh, hosting live dinner, and you have a land-based casino with, from where you are uh, streaming. So uh, this is a question for everyone. Rob, what are the pros and cons between studios or live from a brand, uh, a land-based casino? So which, what are the pros and cons of having each of them? Uh, 
who would like to go first? David, you have been quiet for the past five minutes. Yeah, um, I guess the, there's a. It depends on the angle you want to go for and position yourself um, as a company. There's definitely a kind of, there's a marketable factor around streaming your product from a specific land-based casino. You can tie in commercials. Um, you can obviously engage with players who maybe follow our, our um, patrons of a particular land-based casino, and then you can obviously broadcast and advertise your product as. Hey, we're streaming uh, live roulette from Casino One Two Three, and players will be able to connect with that, and again, it builds up this trust element and the familiarity. However, on the flip side, um, a studio is going to be much more cost effective. Um, you have complete control of the studio. You can obviously push it in ways you want. It's much more scalable um, than a land-based casino would be. But yeah, I mean, there's a kind of there's two sides of the coin here. They're both uh, relevant. I think it's it's interesting to see that Scientific Games have obviously purchased Authentic Gaming recently, and um, one of the USPs was that they broadcast from these live um, actual, actual land-based casinos with their products. And given SG's position in the US, you know, uh, it's speculative to say that maybe they would um, look into some more commercial tie-ins using that live dealer product. But the fact that they've now invested into a live dealer product shows that the importance of um, having a good live dealer solution for the online market and uh, whether they expand the studios, expand the land-based um, partnerships. I think they, I think it's still, um, yeah, there, there's positives and negatives on both sides. Okay, so it, it, it somehow evens out. Uh, Chris, Oliver? Yeah, no, maybe. Oh, sorry. Go no, no, go, Oliver. <laughs> Maybe the, um, the question is, uh, as Kevin mentioned, what's the business perspective? So what's the monetization behind that? And if land-based land casinos already have something running, then it's added value. And there can be, of course, not only the one-to-one -one replacement, it can also be something like a better user experience. So if you see people involved in real life in, in, into the games, that's much more exciting maybe than having that uh, transferred from a studio so all these things like credibility user experience how we make a, a game really interesting to the audience i think play a, play a large role and there's still room for uh, innovations here in my opinion okay chris uh, you know i i always look at things from a business point of view you know i look at you know whatever is here today, we're not going to change. So we're going to have to look at what is the future? Where are things going? Um, like I said before, uh, I think a lot of people are still in the testing phases and the tryout phases and to figure out what works and what doesn't work. You know, the emotion is all over the place. Um, like David said, and like Oliver said as well, you know, doing something from a land-based casino and then adding cameras and then the whole studio style and then with the lighting and everything works perfectly. And, and if there is an issue, what do you do versus, you know, a studio where you have everything controlled? I think it's much more related to, you know, the business philosophy to, you know, what you want to do and how you want to market it. And then, you know, if you take that into consideration and translate it to get, uh, again to which markets do you want to go after? And, 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 and as Jeremiah said before, you know, in Africa, you might have 20 different approaches because the people just interpret it different. That, that means that this whole market is in development and people are figuring out what sticks and how, does, how can they make it stick whether it's from a land-based casino or from a, a, a studio-based, but both are there to stay. The question is, what is the perfect key? Those who have a land-based casino, can they make use of the online? Or is the online by itself strong enough to overrun what's happening in the market? It's going to be an interesting you know, couple of uh, time ahead of us. Yeah, uh, just just a quick question. How does this actually work in a, in a streaming live from a, from a land-based casino? Maybe you can give me some idea about do you install a camera next to the to the table or how does that work? Well, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, a, uh, that's a great question. That's a concept called OTT over the table where you have a top-down mm -hmm. um, shot from the video uh, camera there's things like moving cameras as well to bring a bit more dynamic into the system 
but of course you need to have the proper camera and microphone setups so you have everything transported in, in, in high quality that's key somehow and is there some data privacy uh issues indeed maybe showing the player that is at the table giving consent that he could be in that live stream or that's a great question i have there are probably privacy concerns as well here if you can see face uh -huh. shots from from people gambling there so I, I don't i don't know about these things but that's things uh -huh. you need to consider probably oh yeah so this is something that's going to probably if somebody a regulator might be listening in they they, they might <laughs> get an idea about this okay so so staying at, at chris uh and in talking about business value which is very important uh, so is there an added value in adding a live streaming casino to ex an existing business or should there be an investment in a separate business or brand? Well, that's, that's a very good question. And that's what I you know, said before in the previous answer is that um, as a organization, yeah, and an organization could be we land-based casinos, we want to go online or mm -hmm. We are a online studio and we want to expand, but want to stay out of the land-based casinos, okay? There's all kinds of questions that you need to ask yourselves, but let's take hypothetical now, we're a land-based casino and we also want to operate uh, in the online space, okay? Now, what, what is going to happen is you're going to have the strategical questions about you know, your brand, you're going to have the strategical questions about the customers. You know, the customers who come into your casino, uh, you know, are identified, you know who they are, and you have a connection with them. The ones that are online, you know, if the whole CRM system and the services provided are not under your control, then who owns the customer? Okay. So that is a real key thing on how to communicate with the customer. OK, and this is also for the long term vision of your business, really important that you maximize the value of your brand being the land based casino, you know, responsible gaming, having uh, built up the reputation and so forth, that you really think about how to do that. And for that, you need to make sure that you do and work with very good partners or with um, very good joint ventures so that you secure the longer term vision of where you're going. A very nice or a very nice example is for example, um, you know, uh, Grand Casino Baden uh, in Switzerland who also has the online connected and they, they did something very visionary in regards to making sure that a land-based casino also had, um, let's say the benefits of an online future presence. And, you know, there are opportunities, but it's up to the business uh, smart people to work that out. Got it. Yeah, I just, I just, I just asked uh, Simon Planzer, who is from Switzerland, if he, if, he, if he wishes to add something to that Baden casino, because I, I most probably has, so he has some knowledge about that. Yes, Sorry. indeed. Sorry for no, just asking you about this. No, one. no problem. No problem at all, actually. Um, the, of course, the Swiss regulatory system is, is quite a peculiar one in that it uh, has gone kind of against the general trend of, of Europe of establishing uh, online licenses, separate online licenses. Uh, also in Switzerland, the EU law does not apply. So in, in that regard, legally speaking, that was, that was more feasible uh, in that country outside the EU to do so. And uh, Casino Baden indeed has, has uh, chosen a, a, a bold approach in early on deciding uh, to go uh, technology, uh, so to say. And uh, um, it, it's kind of a separate business now uh, with, uh, it has grown and with different people. So the Gamanza platform has, uh, has been provided now to to several uh, land-based casinos as the technology uh, partner indeed. Okay, thank you. Thank you for this intervention. It's like live TV when, <laughs> when we get to pick somebody from the audience. Yeah, of so, course. so of stay, course. staying in regulation, maybe David, uh, I know you guys are also active in Latin America and North America as well. 
as well as NanoStream are, are also doing streaming over there. How do you see uh, in correlation Europe versus the rest of the world, I mean, the Latin America, North America, in terms of uh, allowing live dealer casinos? Um, Europe's quite fragmented in terms of different jurisdictions that are coming up. And we can see the US is obviously taking a state-by-state -state approach as well. So they, they, different countries and um, different jurisdictions will look at live dealer products in a different way. Um, certain markets, for example, will need you to have your live dealer studio based either within that country or at least within Europe whereas other jurisdictions are happy that you can have a studio like ours based, for example, in Las Vegas, um, somewhere else in North America. So it, it's really, it depends on each individual jurisdiction. Um, the likes of Latin America, then <clears throat> there's certain licenses that you can use to enter different markets where, for example, the Malta gaming license um, has, uh, co covers many different markets across the world. And then it's, it's not quite as a, Fairly restricted as others, for example, based across certain places in Europe. But as as time moves on, everywhere is becoming regulated gradually, um, understandably so as well. So it just depends how each country is going to perceive life um, life dealer products and how they how they want to manage that. Okay, Oliver, Chris, Chris, <laughs> would you like to add to this regulation part? I think the um, the in, in Europe and North America the the societies are very sensitive to trust and uh, regulation and uh, responsive responsible responsible gaming. So a matter of trustful uh, business is uh, very important to be successful in your business, and that's growing also in other parts of the world. So I, we see that um, somehow led by European regulations, but also in North America, everyone knows that different states have different regulations there. So it's all a matter of trust that you don't misuse your business somehow to um, make something not legal and not uh, whatever trustful. And I, I think that's interesting because in the beginning, you also mentioned um, video gaming somehow and live streaming, like things like Twitch. Yeah. Which is interesting because in the early days, it also wasn't trustful. It was kind of kids game or whatever, addictive stuff. And now it has uh, created a very serious business industry. So video games, is no doubt anymore. It's really a serious business and um, acknowledged it creates a lot, of, um, a lot of things around that. Also live streaming generally. And I see there's room for uh, getting really uh, serious business um, and, and responsible business out of the gaming industry here to connect these gaps somehow, because uh, I think that's that's some some things where innovation is still possible and which also would help in the regulation and um, acceptance in this of this area. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, uh, esports is all, uh, a huge huge uh, part of live streaming and, and definitely uh, drives innovation in there as well and lots of influencers having uh, uh, lots of viewers so technology is definitely tested okay so uh, just to approach also this part what do you think about uh, gen z and millennials uh, sorry, Chris, would, would, would you like to also add to this regulation part before I well, have the, the, the regulation uh, I have just a couple of comments to that. Um, you know, the regulations that we talk about, yeah, from my perspective, it's nothing else than, you know, it's a further progression of the internet, um, the further globalization, and how can countries, tax authorities, all of them, you know, participate in this whole activity of getting global. So the, the whole regulation I see as, as part of the whole globalization and how to best manage and, and make sure that, you know, it is, it is guided correctly instead of blocking, you know, guided correctly and responsible and reflective and, and in, in a very, very good way. So I look at it more from a macro perspective than I look at it, you know, what is the regulation here or there? It's, it's an ongoing process you know, with the globalization and the internet being there. Got it. Yeah, we always say that regulators should be open uh, and uh, learn from the industry to 
not to block the business and not to make it too political because usually it's this type of pol- it's, it's because of politics that somehow everything is blocked uh, due to just being more uh, more uh, how can i put this in a in a nice way being more popular in in front of the electorate part because we have the nordic uh, update coming up by nordic gaming and in the nordics it's really a hell uh, happening uh, in the past two years so yeah before we wrap it up uh gen z and millennials uh is is i know game streaming and esports is appealing to them but how does live dealer casino work for them do the gen z and millennials Uh, are they attracted to this type of uh, online uh, activities? I think, I think there is some attraction and connection there, uh, especially as players maybe get stuck playing an online casino for the first time, and then they want to play around and see what options they have. Um, you know, these are people who grew up with every possible entertainment option available at the click of a finger. Shorter attention spans, as we know these days, compared to previous generations. Um, so they need something that's fast and interactive and engaging. So live live dealer can present this. I think we see with the the advent of so many game show type um, games from the live dealer industry, it's something very unique, something much more engaging, um, and something proven on the market um, so far. So it, it, I think it'll depend on how how can the games evolve and what direction can live dealer move from. Um, it'll be interesting to see how how long. The classics roulette and blackjack remain as a uh, you know games of choice for players. Um, I think roulette is it's it's very proven as a, it's going to stand the test of time. I believe because it's very exciting. Um, but other games, you know, players, younger players, uh, millennials may be looking for something a bit more flashy and exciting. Yeah, maybe maybe if the dealer is an anime or something <laughs> like that, it it draws more attention to them. <laughs> Chris, Chris Oliver, would you like to also add to the Gen Z and Millennial part? Yeah, I I completely agree with David. Um, it's all about the creativity of the experience, whether you can attract, you know, whether it's Gen Z or whatever it is or what age it is, it doesn't matter. It's all about it's all about creativity, creating the experience and then making sure that you have the elements around it. And the key thing is, you know, do you have a connection to a, a user group, to, to a clientele, or do you need to um, tackle a complete new clientele? But again, in the land-based casino, in the casino world, there is already a specific interest for specific things. The question is, can you grow with them Or can you bring new opportunities to them so that they stay connected? For that, you need to be willing to take risk and look beyond and just embrace technology as something for new opportunities. And whether it's for the live streaming or in the creativity of creating games, a lot of our partners spend a huge amount of money in newer games because of the power of the devices are growing up and are getting stronger so it's all about creativity and you know um fighting for the person's attention well whatever the you know the group of people are okay yeah that's that's the point oliver yeah i agree and i think it goes far beyond bringing uh just a casino table live uh, that's that might be good and might be good to extend your uh, audience group and your customer group But there's really a lot of room for creativity. So you can create games around that, gamification and other things. As David was mentioning, game shows, game show elements and other applications, video gaming applications, things like that, a combination of things. So there, there, there's really room for, and it's much different than, than land-based only. So um, the online space creates a lot more opportunities for businesses and Uh, to think beyond that and to allow creativity, that's uh, that's a great driving force. And uh, younger generations, of course, are very open to these things. And they are driving, as I mentioned earlier, video games and streaming in the past and to make that a uh, great industry. And that could be similar to the online space combined with gaming and uh, several other things together. Yeah, I know that this isn't the topic of our panel, but sports betting, somebody on our tech conference has mentioned that it, it does not 
believe that we're in 2021 and you are watching a live stream of a football match and you cannot just click somewhere on the screen and place a bet. You need to exit full screen, go to the to, the, to place a bet. This should be an innovation which uh, would definitely increase live streaming and also the uh, interactivity part. I don't okay. think it's far away. Um, yeah, if, you I... look, if you look at some of the actions by some large media companies and some of the people they've appointed recently, uh, especially looking at the US, some of the acquisitions and mergers going on, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it for yeah, it seems an inevitability. Everybody's kind of looking for everything to happen. I, at one of our conferences in 2018, we saw a product which uh, was like, if there was a match going on on TV, you just scan it with your mobile phone and, and you could place a bet on that match. So that was the biggest invention back then. So that, that's why I'm saying that we need to move forward. And, and I, I think that 2022 will be full of surprises. And moving on to this question about the future, uh, a question for everyone as a closing question uh what is next in live dealer casino or live streaming and and how do you see 2022 well, let's start off with david i think coming from the the last topic i think it's going to be about the what's the creativity and what's the level of new games and new variants that that can be brought to the market um the the live dealer industry is really heating up obviously there's there's one massive company at the top at the moment but there's so much competition coming in inevitably um, you know, if you look at maybe seven years ago in the slot space, there was there was a couple of dominant players, specifically Net at the time, and then gradually things people have started to catch up. And uh, I think that the live dealer segment is you know the more competition there is, the better it is um, for the player because there's going to be more choice and it'll push the dominance of creativity and product. So I think next year is going to see some more advancements and uh, exciting new games to come out, including from ourselves. So I can't give too much away, but yeah, um, everybody wants to try and keep finding the, the next best uh, live casino game as well as uh, the next best slots. So I think uh, some really exciting content will come. Yeah, I hope you, you you noted my idea of adding maybe unicorns and stuff like that. <laughs> okay, Chris or Olivor, who would like to go first? I think there, there's really a lot of room to for growth in the market, and it's not it's competition is driving the industry, but also growth and opportunities. So technology is really at a great stage now, and but it's still moving and progressing. So innovations are driving this a lot, and you create a lot of new things which are possible to really grow your audience, to interact anywhere in the world. So everyone is used now to interact by, with video. You can add this to games, you add gamification elements to several other applications. So these things to have video available basically everywhere in the browser, in the in a stable environment on a global scale opens up really a lot of chances. And I think there is a lot of things happening in the last next in the next couple of months. Even adding the stream to glasses, like smart glasses and stuff like that. Chris. Um, opportunities are endless. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, like with every activity ongoing, what you see and what you will see is a further segmentation. You know, where in the past, you know, you might have one idea. You now will see going forward a huge amount of ideas and segmentation also with regards to, you know, what kind of dealers should be at the table for which uh, par, uh, people in which countries. So the next thing is that globalization will be a big part for next year. And in the end, it's all about business sense and creativity. So, you know, the, the industry has great opportunities. It's up to them to, you know, put the balls together and put the keys and the pieces of the puzzle together to find their way in this growing market. So you don't have to fight each other, but you can have the market grow. And I think that is a very, how should I say, uh, a very positive and a very luxury position this market is in. Okay, thank you. It has been fun, right? Yeah, it has. I loved it. Thank you so much. And uh, Let's close this session now. Uh, thanks, David, Chris, and Oliver, and hope to see you soon again in 2022 at our next panel. And 
Take care. Thank you. And I, Thank you, Zoltan. Thank I you for having us. Cheers. Bye-bye.